I think that's the bigger question. How many games in gaming history have generated $700 million, period? This story came out last week, and it's been an ongoing story for years, literally years. As I go back on the Razor Fist YouTube, Rageaholic YouTube channel, I find a video from five years ago uh, from well, you. Longer than that, I've been talking about it. Yes, absolutely. Well, That's my most the... recent one. <laughs> from five yeah, years some ago. say he still has that cup behind him. It's true. The, the Whataburger cup right there. Whataburger, baby. Um. But this is about Star Citizen, and this this article came out from IGN a few days ago, and it says Star Citizen pushes through the seven hundred million dollar raised mark, and no, there still isn't a release date here. Now, <laughs> before we started the show, people saw the title, and pe like some people are ridiculous Star Citizen stands, like they love this game, they will go yeah. to battle this game and they began oh i had one I, I had one of those fans after i recorded my first rant he the guy sounded like arnold schwarzenegger on codeine he re recorded a reply video it was utterly retarded and uh by the way that was like 10 years ago the guy was coping then I think one of the ex I, one of the exact things the guy said was nobody complains about cyberpunk 2077 not being released yet because that one took a long time it was like really no one complained. Wasn't Cyberpunk 2077 like one of the biggest, <laughs> like, seriously? Wasn't it the biggest, like, Category 5 shitstorm in the history of gaming? Yes, actually, that didn't turn out very well either. So how much worse is that going to be for Star Citizen exactly? But yeah, we're, uh, we'll go ahead and talk about it. Well, this is, uh, this is pretty interesting. IGN breaks down its revenue uh, very well in this article, bro broken down by the, by the hour. Says uh, so. It's Cloud Imperium Games, and they're the developer behind the controversial space sim. Makes revenue publicly available on its website, uh, which at the time the, this article is published, uh, our publication showed Star Citizen at the seven hundred one million one hundred eighty six thousand six hundred fifteen dollar mark. Right. And CIG calls the money funds raised. Now, well, and, and that's that is telling actually because in the video that you just showed that I had recorded like whatever, five years ago, uh -huh. I think they had just, or they were just rounding the corner on 600 million or something. So it's taken them a while to get from 600 to 700. They've slowed down and well, they, like significantly, it, it, which tells me they're probably subsisting on whales. It, it, as I pointed out, I think in that video, Chris Roberts, who's the guy who's running the whole show, he had actually secured like two big investors, which was something that he said he was crowdfunding in order to avoid. Then he goes out and hunts down two big investors uh, to work. So that might also be a factor. But like they have slowed way, way, way down on the fundraising. As, as crazy as that number is, the game's been in development like 12 years or something. With, as it says right here, yeah, over... Over the 12 years since its crowdfunding began. I mean, think think about how much the world has changed in 12 years. And let's put that let's also put that in uh, another verbiage. In the last decade and two years since development began, 12 years over a decade. So in 2012, what were you doing in 2012, Razor? Like <laughs> Labs, you were in what right? In, you know, I was in 10th grade. Right. Well, right. that was when it was revealed. They apparently did like a whole preamble development before that, like 2009, 2010. When, <laughs> seriously, when when this game started to develop, well, actually put it this way. Kids who were born the year Star Citizen was began development are now freshmen or, or sophomores in high school. That's Jeez. That, that kind of puts it all in perspective. All right, so they're approaching Star Citizen Alpha 4, right? But this is all building up to Star Citizen 1.0, which Roberts, the CIG chief, the uh, chief over at that, says, uh, which Robert says is what we consider the feature and content set to represent, quote, commercial release. However, there's still no release date or even a release window for Star Citizen 1.0. CIG will share a roadmap later this year, he has said. So uh, well, that's, that's not true. They announced the release date was a uh, holiday of 2015, 
which I'm sure we'll be passing any day now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait for it. But you always get an excuse. Like, for, uh, they've always got some kind of reason why it hasn't come out. And, like, fair enough. Games are done when they're done. But, you know, they've announced several release dates and didn't meet them. And there's kind of two games being released at once. There's the uh, appropriately named PU, uh, Persistent Universe, and there is Squadron 42. Squadron 42 is the single player game. Squadron 42 is what I wanted. I didn't even care about the multiplayer crap. Squadron 42 is just Wing Commander. That's what it is. I love Wing Commander. I've always loved that series. It's basically just a new Wing Commander game. It even has Mark Hamill in it. So it's it's just a classic Wing Commander game. Yeah, and and that's the one people have been saying like, oh, that's that'll come out first. And it's like apparently they've shifted members of that development over to the Persistent Universe module, which was supposed to be taken at a good sign, or as a good sign rather. But that was like over a year ago, and we haven't heard anything since. So I don't know if the plan at this point is we'll only release Squadron 42 when the Persistent Universe version of star citizen the massively multiplayer online star citizen is actually available and try and really blow people away maybe that's the thought process i really don't know but from launch modules to complete version upgrades to the great white rhinoceros known as squadron 42 about the only thing over the course of this 12-year development cycle that star citizen has never failed to deliver is excuses it's over and over and over again, they miss a date, excuse, miss a date, excuse. And it got to the point where they had to implement a roadmap. I mean, process this for a beat. It was almost a decade before they even had a development roadmap available for people to look at. <laughs> so they could, they could they could have been doing anything in that time. I, I, I really want to push this home like when you if you go to their website and this is just crazy to see right they have their their website you can break down their funding per hour broken down broken down per day per hour here we go this is in the last day by the way so in the last last day broken down per hour at, at its height it made fifteen thousand dollars an hour right. at its lowest it made less than uh, just about seven thousand dollars an hour yeah. okay so this is this is continuing on. Now, if you go back, if you continue to scroll and down, you, and you see there, those spikes correspond with major announcements, right? right? I wonder every time I see a Star Citizen announcement, is it, it, the first thing that comes to mind is is that true, or are they just trying to get the game out there again so they get more donations? Because like in late twenty, you see a spike there in late twenty fifteen, and that's when they announced the game was going to come out. Right. And you, you see that again and again over the course of the timeline. Well, OK, this is in the last this, this is the month monthly breakdown for revenue. Right. So right. last month, uh, I guess this is April, I guess. I don't know. I, it's going up April 4. I guess that'd be April, May. So in May, they made uh, twenty five million dollars, something like that. Right. It, which is a which is a jump over the last six months. It it had uh, dropped down to about four million dollars a month, but they're still generating four million dollars a month. Look at the campaign start. It started on December twenty third, two thousand twelve. Yeah, and their first stretch goal was at two and a half million dollars. PS four wasn't out yet, folks. Right, <laughs> right, and I think that's the one thing. Like, what were you playing? Your three DS at the time, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Resident um, Evil 6, I think I was getting ready to review. <laughs> but they continue here. As you scroll down, like you, you can see they they there's always an extra stretch goal. Always an extra stretch goal. It's 5 million, 10 million. And they're generating this money. You know, this is back in 2013. It took a million dollars uh for between uh 14 13 million and 14 million dollars. They it took two months. That they're like, well, we'll do we do this in two months? Well, they're generating that, like, you know, every every, you know, uh, four million dollars low end on a month to month yeah. basis. You can see the as you just continue to scroll. Look at this just insanity that I, I continue to scroll down. And eventually, they just stopped. And they're like, yeah, you know, we we're at sixty five million. We don't need to have any more stretch goals. We don't need to add anything else to the game. Like, how do you? Uh, 
it just it just continues on and on and on and on and on. Enhanced ship modularity. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Need another million dollars for that. So I guess the bigger question here, as as we're now passing seven hundred million dollars in funds raised with five million star citizens here. Number one, how do you get sucked into this, right? How do you get so invested that yeah. 5 million people will invest $705 million? You know, this? if you really want to make the Star Citizen fanboys explode, heads explode, rather, uh, there's a guy you should have on as a guest. He's also a video game developer, and that's Derek Smart. It'll make it'll make them furious. because <laughs> he, He's made similar games to Wing Commander, whatever. He has a little bit of a rivalry with Chris Roberts, but he's also one of the few people who was kind of reporting beat by beat what was going on early on in the development here and he's kind of a meme in star citizen circles but boy that uh that would be an interesting meeting personally uh but yeah i i just it just seems like they didn't i mean put it this way they changed engines completely when was that 2015 16 they changed to the amazon Whatever the Amazon video game engine is, they changed the game's engine completely. Uh, it's just wild when you when you start looking into this stuff. I think they've subsisted largely on whale donors, what are called right. whales. It's people who have a lot of disposable income. And fair enough. I'm not going to far be it from me to judge yeah. that. I don't think those people are stupid. They see some promise in the game you know more power to you as far as i'm concerned but man this is a long time to be developing a game the most pertinent detail though was the one i pointed out was how slowly they moved from 600 million to 700 million there was a big deal made of them passing 600 million them getting to 700 million it has actually slowed down which i find slightly surprising well i i think the bigger thing here is is Look, you know, the, the the word scam is thrown around. We use scam in the title today, right? I, I just have a hard time wrapping my head around anything generating a hundred million dollars, right? right? And not having a product, a fully flushed out product, oh, yeah. and people people not being upset about it. Let alone you can Star play, Star. you can play Star Citizen. It's still in a right. largely unpresentable state. It's wild. Like I got an RTX 4090 in my computer. It doesn't run very well still. And it's notorious for this. Even having a high, 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 high end PC, it's not the best optimized game. There's a, clearly a lot of like junk code or something. It's just not a very well optimized game. Every time I've played Star Citizen, it's just chugged and had performance issues not a smooth experience at all um but I, it, everyone focuses on the release date and for good reason like by the time star citizen releases we'll all have our star citizenship like we'll be playing it from a spaceship <laughs> I, I think you know put it this way john travolta will come out before star citizen <laughs> <laughs> I, I think i think that it's uh it's just from the outside looking in, this does not seem above board. That's all. I think that's the biggest thing. I don't know how, how anybody could, and maybe it's, I don't know enough about this, right? But I don't understand how you can have $700 million of anything. Like you can, you can say, Hey, look at, look at this. We're very transparent with the, the revenue that's our, our funding stats, right? But well, what is that? Now really they good? are. Now they are. They didn't used to be. They would, they would rattle off the number every year or two years or whatever, but they were remarkably opaque about the development for a long, long, long. Like they hired the lead designer on a game that I loved. It was a fan made game, Mech Warrior Living Legends. It was this guy was pissed off at Mech Warrior Online, basically, it was kind of disappointing. And so he made this fan mod that was a proper Mech Warrior game. And the reason they hired him was he was an expert in CryEngine. Uh, quietly, like, I don't know, two years later or something, they just canned the guy and a bunch of other people. That's another part of this story that never gets talked about. There's been a ton of turnover. And it's like, why? The, the guy you hired was supposed to be an expert in CryEngine. So what? 
happened there. And I think shortly thereafter, they wound up changing engines. It's based on CryEngine. Somebody in the chat mentioned that the Amazon engine or whatever is based on CryEngine, which is, all, by the way, notorious for having problems. I'm a huge fan of Hunt Showdown. That's based on CryEngine. It's from Crytek, for crying out loud. The guys who made the engine made the game, and they're having to upgrade the engine now because it has so many problems. So anyway. Well, I, I think that, uh, you know, those are like, you know, you see a lot of people who are uh, really into this, into this game, right? Hey, awesome. Love it. Right. I'll play it when I am too. I am too. I am a huge fan of Chris Roberts. That's the weird position that I find myself in. Like, I'm glad that he's getting a chance to make his game, but it feels like this could have been handled differently. I think what everyone expected was Squadron 42, if that's your single player game, then that would come up, and and when that came out, that would like raise enough hype that you would probably have gotten a bunch of donations, and then you could have finished the massively multiplayer, you know, pie in the sky, Star Citizen thing. And I think it may have even been intimated by Cloud Imperium Games. That's the developers of the games, mm -hmm. for the record. Mm -hmm. um, at some point, that that was the plan for the release to have it kind of staggered that way: Squadron Forty Two first, then Persistent Universe. At some point, they got completely opaque on that subject, and now we kind of don't know which is coming first or if they're coming all at once. Um, but we do know that they've raised $700 million. They make sure to point that out. Right. And I, I go back to, like, where is that money? Where's that money going, right? How is that money being spent? You know, they're saying, oh, it's development. Okay, cool. But, like, I mean, <laughs> how many... I think that's the bigger question. How many games in gaming history have generated $700 million, period. Like, total. It's got to be probably, what, less less than 50? Maybe 20? I, I don't know. I could be, I, you know, I, the Call of Duty games make a billion, right? There was a big deal made out of, what was the game? For perspective, there was a big deal made out of Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain, costing $90 million. Which, it was probably three times that with the marketing budget. They spent a lot on that, and and konami did indeed lose money on that game initially but like for perspective that was on the higher end of triple a video games at that time and kind of was the reason hideo kojima got kicked out of the company and blah 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 90 million 700 million <laughs> like we're we're not even in the same ballpark at this point i, I think that's that's where i keep continuing to go back to just looking at it from the outside in right show me a roadmap that's it just show me the roadmap just give me a release date and if you miss it okay fine just put just put a release date down you know uh and i know that people are very passionate about the game cool love it do it do your thing that's awesome um but it just it doesn't people are work. pointing out G gta cost two billion it's like after first off after marketing and second off that's because they had like 20 different studios working dawn to dusk that's another thing about Cloud Imperium Games. They opened a studio in like California. They have like satellite studios all over the place and they're in really expensive locations. It's not like they're going to like Montreal where they give you tax breaks for opening a game studio. They open their their studios in retarded places. Um, and also GTA 5 was what? The previous game that uh, Rockstar had made was Red Dead Redemption. And that was 2009 or 10, right? GTA 5 came out in 2013. That's a slightly different development cycle. So I have uh, a list here of most expensive games ever, ever cost here. And I'm just going to go down here and take a look at this real fast because I uh, thank you, Blabs. Uh, this is from Wikipedia over here, by the way. Let's let's go check this out. This is a. Uh, Genshin Impact apparently cost 700. I don't I don't even know what this game, you know, how that game could do that. Star Citizen number two, the second highest development cost uh, in history. Uh, I don't know where. How did, how did Genshin Go wind up costing that much? Yeah, I don't know. Monopoly Go. I don't know. This is, there's got to be something going on here. Cyberpunk, right. uh, Call of Duty. I, I don't see GTA on here. Maybe I'm maybe I'm missing two billion dollars of development costs. There's GTA four hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. um so you know i this is a 
Oh, come on. Would Star Citizen fans lie? I, I, I don't know, Razor. I don't know. But, you know, they, they certainly are passionate about it, man. It's, yeah. it's, they're passionate about it. Well, let's get to don't, don't forget about that great big shindig that they spent backer money <laughs> throwing in Germany or whatever. They had this great big convention that had this really elaborate set and whatever. And it was basically intended to kind of it was it was like a big celebration. They also are kind of famous for their weird indulgent stuff that they have at their studios. Like they have like an automatic space door <laughs> at their studio that you see in some of their videos. And you're just like, is this the kind of stuff you should be spending money on when you, you haven't delivered a game in 12 years? <laughs> 